Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone who is here and all that are online to worship this sixth Sunday of Easter. Reading this makes me think Easter must be pretty special to have six, actually seven Sundays. And indeed it is. Without Easter and Christ's resurrection, there would be no reason for us to be here. So Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Please stand for the thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Here is, look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love that, you, that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our, Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first song is Beautiful Savior, number 838. You may be seated.
Our first reading is first from 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Oh, I'm sorry. First reading is from Acts chapter 10, verses 44 to 48. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 John chapter 5, 1 through 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves a parent loves a child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise if you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter, beginning at verse 9. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. And I don't see any children here today, so I think we'll just move on. A Sunday school teacher was discussing the Ten Commandments with her five and six-year-olds. After explaining the commandment to honor thy father and thy mother, she asked, is there a commandment that teaches us how to treat our brothers and sisters? Without missing a beat, one little boy answered, Thou shall not kill. <laughs> Commandments. Parent. These are the two words that stood out to me this week when I was preparing my message. In our second lesson this week from 1 John, everyone that loves the parent loves the child. In the gospel I just read, Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Through the written word and the spoken word, may we know your living word, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. If you keep my commandments, sounds easy, right? If I were to poll each and every person here, would you be able to recall all Ten Commandments? 
If you were perhaps getting confirmed soon, you may rattle them right off. But I feel that after time, we lose sight of those commandments. I'm just going to refresh our memory a little bit. I am the Lord your God. You shall, have not, you shall not have strange gods before me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. And you shall not covet your neighbor's goods. Just imagine our world if all mankind would follow those Ten Commandments. What a sweet world we would live in. It is difficult to follow commandments, rules, at all times. We are surrounded by rules every day. We have speed limits we must obey. You must be quiet in the library. Can't park here. They're all around us. And they generally start when we begin to walk and talk. As a child, I recall the rules that my parents had for my sisters and I. Ooh, the eyes we would get from my dad if we disobeyed wasn't good. As a parent, I then took my turn to set rules for my children. For example, bedtime. That was a big ordeal on a nightly basis. When my, my children were younger, bedtime was very difficult. If you are a parent, I'm sure you can relate to me. Perhaps the bedtime became later in the summertime, but it was always between 8 and 8.30 in my house during school. I would have to fight tooth and nail to get them to go to bed. And then once there, the fight was for them to remain in bed. Oh, I need a drink of water. I need to go to the bathroom. All the tactics children used were tried by my children. Night after night, I felt dread knowing I would have to fight with them to go to bed, to instill one simple rule that as a parent I knew was best. They needed it to function in school and for their brains to grow, but they didn't listen. Have you ever been at Walmart walking through, hearing a child screaming at the top of their lungs, perhaps they wanted a treat or a toy, and the parent was not willing to give in? They had set their rule for the day, and if they behaved, they may get the treat. And I have been there myself, walking, trying to get your child to walk, and they're laying on the floor going limp. I just feel for those parents. We have all been there. Do you cave in just to keep the peace? Or do you maintain your composure and teach the child a lesson? Does parenting get easier as the child grows into a young adult? At that moment in Walmart, you pray it does. But does it? The answer, unfortunately, is not really. As our children grow, they start to venture out. They drive. They attend dances. Attend school events without us. More time with their friends rather than spending time with dear old mom and dad. <laughs> children start to make it known that they don't care for the rules that you have set forth for them. I'm an adult, they spout off. They want to remind you of that. Hey, I don't have to listen to you anymore. The problem is this transition to young adulthood is that your child has one foot firmly planted in adulthood and one toehold in childhood. They want to be adults when it suits them. Staying out late, not telling the parents where they're going, what they're doing. But they like to jump back into childhood when they need something, money, shoulder to cry on, a car, 
and the list goes on and on. I have to wonder, is this what it's like for Jesus? He is, in essence, our Father. Do we venture out and sin? We break his Ten Commandments, but then we jump back into Christianity when it suits us? We have needs, and our prayers need to be answered. Is that how it works? Just imagine Jesus watching all of his children breaking the Ten Commandments that God set forth, knowing that we will come back and ask for forgiveness and repent our sins. Each and every time, though, we are forgiven. We are loved, always. In today's Gospel, he says, love one another, simple and to the point. Parent, child, liberal, conservative, Christian, non-believer, love one another. The Ten Commandments are there to guide us through this life and to remind us what it is to be a Christian, a child of God. We have to work at planting both our feet in Christianity and refrain from breaking the Ten Commandments to suit our needs. If you watch the news, you see protests exploding across our country. You see and hear about political woes. You see innocent people dying. Commandments broken. We need to lean on Jesus, our Father, our parent. We need to focus on prayer, reading the scripture, attending church, and simply loving one another. Dear Father, please forgive us for not following God's commandments, but we thank you for always accepting our faults and forgiving us for our mistakes. Please let us grow in faith and praise you each and every day. Amen. Our next hymn is in the blue hymnal, number 664, A New Commandment. Please stand if you are able and join me in confessing the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving Shepherd, how comforting to hear you know each of us by name. Strengthen us in our faith to bear witness of your endless love and grace to all who have yet to hear the good news. God of grace, hear our prayer. Abiding Shepherd, open our hearts to allow the Holy Spirit to translate our words of faith and love to actions of faith and love. Open our eyes to see the needs of others, the pain in their faces, the hopelessness in their eyes, the stoop of their shoulders. Today we pray for Ann, Arnold, Becky, Beverly, Braden, Carol, Clarence, Corinne, Darla, Dave, Dave, David, Denise, Gloria, Jack, Jaden, Jackie, James O, Jerome, Jerry, Karen, Christy, Larry, Mary, Nancy, Nathan, Patty, Rachel, Will, and the friends and family of Carol Grossman. God of grace, here. Gracious Shepherd, the devastation of recent tornadoes have left many homeless. We ask you to, to provide resources to help with the recovery and restoration of their lives. God of grace. Saving Shepherd, help us as a community of believers to make a difference. Challenges present opportunities to serve and witness. Help us to grow the community's outreach programs of the food pantry, resale shop, and counseling. Keeping our eyes on you keeps our focus on living the great commandment to love others as we have been loved. Thank you for the opportunities and blessings you give us. God of grace. Eternal Shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands. We remember our loved ones who have died and now reside with you in eternity. We await with humble joy the time when we will be reunited and dwell in your house forever. God of grace. Hope-giving shepherd, guide the leaders of nations to strive to care for those in need and to lead with a servant's heart, striving to compromise their differences with peaceful coexistence as a primary objective. God of grace. Join me in the, with the last petition. With everlasting thanks and joy for your love and forgiveness, we ask you to be with us till we meet again. This week, help us to take every opportunity to be thankful for the blessings of each day. Help us to pay attention to how best we can be a gift to others. 
May we approach each day with soul, serving others, uplifting lives. We ask all in the name of your dear Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated for today's offering. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Join with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for today's announcements. I'd like to thank Crystal for her message. We all have to remember, I think we know, we know the commandments, but there's all the little things that go along with each little commandment, uh, commandment that we don't always remember. The next time communion will be offered is next Sunday, May 12th, 8 a.m. and 10.30, and Wednesday, May 15th. The food pantry needs for May are tuna and pasta sauce, and the food pantry wants are toothpaste and toothbrushes. If you do not want to be included in St. John's Media, please fill out a opt-out policy and return it to the office. And on Wednesday, May 8th, the church office will be closing at 345. May 19th is the last day of Sunday school. There will be one church service at 9.30 in the parish hall. Graduates and Sunday school students will be recognized at this service. A lunch will be provided after the service. This will also be the start of our summer worship schedule, one service on Sundays at 9.30 a.m. One of the Sunday school rooms has been updated with new carpeting, new wall barred and painted. If you'd like to see it, it's two doors down from the mother's room. I'm sure people wouldn't mind if you went down to look how it looks now. The prayer sheet has prayers on the other side, so please take it along so you have a prayer for each day of the week. Um, I'd like to say I heard yesterday that the 
Lay Ministry School held its graduation, and I'd like to congratulate those that went and attended it. I would think it, would, it was a big commitment for two years, and I'm thinking Carol Paulzine and Kay Tullock were graduates. I have no written announcements that say that, but I know they have been attending, so I'd like to congratulate them on their gradu graduation. Are there any other announcements? Any birthdays or anniversaries? I don't see anything else, so our last hymn is on the insert, which is, they know, us, we are, they know we are Christians by our love. Receive the blessing. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unlanding joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Alleluia. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.